What's good, y'all? It's your boy Ross back at again with another video. So we just finished up the live stream reaction. Um, shout out to everyone that was able to be a part of that, man. The go home show for SmackDown had some interesting moments, but it definitely ended off on a strong, strong note. Uh, everyone that was probably at that show had a great time. I can definitely tell the energy was electric towards the end of the show, but we're going to get to that. But we have to talk about what went down on the show that involved the judgment day and the bloodline. So we started off the show. Starting off hot, obviously, LA Knight coming out there, about to cut a promo, ridiculously over. It's not even a question. And then he gets interrupted by Paul Heyman, accompanied by Solo and uh, Jimmy Uso. And he pretty much cuts him off. And Paul Heyman, as Paul Heyman is really good at doing, he's good at giving other wrestlers credit, putting them over. And right now, he was putting over... Um, he was putting over um, LA Knight in the ring. You thought he was going to talk about the next big star, the next big, uh, you know, the next popular star, the next guy uh, that potentially may be the face of the company was going to be Solo. You thought he was going to allude to Solo, but no, he said, I hate to admit it, but you're going to be the next big, next big star, you, LA Knight. But unfortunately, you're on the wrong side of things. And, you know, what I'm saying you're you're in the bloodlines way and we're going to have to take care of that. Whatever. Paul Heyman pretty much, you know, what I'm saying was just, you know, letting him know that you got the bloodlines attention and that could be problematic for you. You know, even if you are the next guy up, uh, LA Knight proceeds to respond. He's like, yeah, I appreciate that. But, you know, I have a receipt here for all the bull, bull crap you talking. You don't believe anything you're saying. You, you're saying some BS. And once again, he gets interrupted. But this time, it's by Jimmy. Jimmy takes the microphone once again from Paul Heyman. Paul Heyman doesn't like it. And then he's like, hey, man, you ain't even going to make it to payback. He's, he's talking like he's the tribal chief once again. And he tells L.A. Knight, you're not even going to make it to payback. And then he shoves the mic back in Paul Heyman's like chest. And he's like, ow, what What he, ow, he was upset about that. Thought that was funny. So they get on the ring apron, Paul, uh, not Paul, uh, Jimmy Uso and Solo or whatnot. And then that's when John Cena comes out there to even up the odds he's ready to fight or whatevs and then that's when they start to back down and they slow down or whatever they you know they're trying to retreat uh once john cena evens up the odds la knight proceeds to get on the microphone he's like whoa 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 whoa, whoa. since jimmy you want you 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 acting like a wannabe uh tribal chief you're pretending to be the tribal chief how about you and me go one-on-one -on -one tonight jimmy what's up and Jimmy, and before Jimmy could really say anything, Paul Heyman was like, oh, I don't know about that. He was mouthing, I don't know about that. But Jimmy accepted it. He's like, you know what? Let's go. I'm ready for it. And Paul Paul Heyman's like, wait, what are you doing? Like, we didn't, that didn't get approved. Like, nah, I got it. I'm. A, he called me out. Let's do it. Once again, the story here is Jimmy has been overstepping his bounds completely since Roman's been gone. That's the story they've been telling. Paul Haven's not really liking it. Solo's just kind of there. Doesn't really have a, a, a say in it. Because he kind of doesn't really care. He just wants to fight. So that's the interesting dynamic they have going on with the bloodline. We know Roman Reigns is supposed to be returning next week on SmackDown. So it's going to be very interesting to see how he feels about what Jimmy's been doing. So we cut to the back. They're going back into their locker room. And Jimmy uh, is having a conversation with Paul Heyman while Solo is walking with them. And basically he's like, man, you know, I ain't, you know, I, I'm basically like the tribal chief. And I'm basically making these decisions because, I mean, the tribal chief is not here. And for you to make decisions, you kind of need to be here. Sending shots at Roman. Like, Roman's not here, so I might as well take care of things you know what i'm saying like let's get things done and he mentions jimmy as they get to their locker room like who left the door open oh they don't matter they come inside locker room and then you see the judgment day all of them in his locker room sitting there like hey let's let's talk you know what i'm saying so i'm like oh see what judgment days what what type of nefarious deeds and plans they're trying to uh, cook up we come back the commercial break they're all standing opposite of each other and then Rhea says 
hey, everybody leave the room except me and Paul Heyman. Everyone leaves. Solo is the last one to leave, as 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 well as Damian Priest. They locked eyes, looking very intense. And everyone at that point, they they're the last two to leave. And Rhea wants to have a conversation with Paul. Come back to them. They're talking in the locker room. And we don't know exactly what they're talking about, but like they're kind of in the middle of conversation, and basically what Rhea is proposing is them working together again, even though we have actually seen them in this type of element, I want to say a few months back, where there was some type of temporary alliance with the bloodline and Judgment Day, but now Rhea is the one proposing it with Paul Heyman. Paul Heyman's like, man, that's a pretty good idea, Matt. I didn't come up with that. Let me talk to my tribal chief, and we'll go from there, you know, and get it approved. And then Rhea was like, hey, I, I, I understand that. I understand this, you know, that's cool, but just know, it's approved already. And he was like, wait, what what are you talking about approved already? Like, I, I, I got to call Roman, you know, and let him know he's my tribal chief. It's maybe approved for the judgment day, but it's not approved for us. He's like, and she's like, Paul, I don't think you understand. It's approved already. I approved it. And then things start to get real tense because she lowered his hand with the phone. Like, you don't have to do that. I already approved it. And Paul's like, hey, what you know, what are you what are you talking about? And then she just blatantly pretty much comes out and say, Paul, I want you to acknowledge me. And bro, that was such a crazy moment. Crowd even said oohs and ahs. She literally said, I'm pretty much I run things now. I'm the tribal chief. I want you to acknowledge me. And Paul's just confused. And bewildered, like what? What are you talking about? And she elaborates that well, Jay went on Monday Night Raw. Monday Night Raw, Jay has already acknowledged me. Oh, what not? Jay has already acknowledged me, and I think is is fitting that you should acknowledge me because if you don't, then there may be some issues going forward. And right now, the bloodline, she knows the bloodline is not that strong. And you don't want issues with the judgment day. So I think it's in their best interest to acknowledge me. And it's clear as day. We all know it. Rhea Ripley runs the judgment day. And I don't think anyone has a problem with it. She is the, the most over in that faction. And the fact that she's out here saying, acknowledge me to Paul Heyman, basically saying, I run the show. You don't need to call Roman no more. And if you don't, you have some issues with us because y'all don't have the numbers anyway. Love it. Fucking love it. That was fantastic. Highlight of the show for sure. So go back to commercial break or whatever. And then we come back and they're in like a backstage area or whatnot. We don't know if he actually called Roman or whatever the case is. But he was like, you know what? That's a good idea. Let's go with it. We don't know what they plan. But we knew there was going to be some shenanigans in the main event between Jimmy and uh, and L.A. Knight. So we have the match or whatnot, as expected. Nothing too crazy. But, of course, the shenanigans ensue when <laughs> Solo just comes out there and attacks L.A. Knight from behind. Ends up, um, Jimmy obviously gets disqualified. They didn't care. It was about the destruction of L.A. Knight and John Cena. So, of course, John Cena uh comes out there to help out or whatnot but then you hear the judgment day music and that's when the odds definitely tipped in bloodline judgment day favor and it was very weird they didn't surround them obviously it's to you know get people you know obviously there was more people coming through the entrance but they didn't surround them so it's weird they just all walked around and lined up on one side if they would have surrounded them they would have been screwed but that's neither here nor there so you have the judgment day and you have the bloodline members all on one side of the apron and that's including jd they are completely outnumbered then you hear jay's music crowd goes crazy and it's it's still not a good situation, but Jay is ready to uh, uh Jay's ready to fight. Even Jimmy's he's kind of backing away. He's kind of behind. I don't think I may I may have been solo, but he's he's not up in the front talking trash. He's behind someone else. And then 
course, if Jay's going to be there, then it got to be Cody. Cody ends up getting, coming down to the ring. Crowd goes crazy on once again. So it's all four of the top baby faces in the company on one side of the ring going against the bloodline and Judgment Day. And the smart thing that Paul did, Paul pulled Solo to the side. We're just going to sit this one out for now. And then the brawl ensues. You got people going over the top row. It was it was a beautiful sight to see. Crowds going crazy. We were having a good time on stream. And then there's a situation where, <clears throat> where John Cena and Solo kind of lock up. They've been teasing this. And they're in the ring together. They start throwing punches. But ultimately, Solo is able to get the best of him or whatnot. And then we have my boy L.A. Knight stepping up to the plate or whatnot to get the best of that situation. And I, I like these just these one-off face-offs, especially with Solo. Solo is still, his character has been protected very well. He still comes off like a big deal, a very big threat in the bloodline. And anybody he's stepping up to, it can easily go down. But the person that really caught the most out of this brouhaha, this scuffle, just, uh, sc uh, you know, whatever you want to call it, this scuffle, this fight, whatever. The person who caught the, the worst is JD. Pretty much everyone else had been taken out with dives and whatnot, and Solo was able to, you know, Solo got tossed out the ring by LA Knight, so he didn't really take any finishing moves. He just kind of, you know, tossed out the ring. Not tossed out, but clotheslined over the ring, and then he just kind of scurried out of frame or whatnot. But JD definitely got the beats. He received everybody's finisher. And now he was like stun locked. If you play WWE 2K, he was just stunned because he was taking everybody's finisher. And he sold that crossroads like a million bucks. When Cody hit the crossroads on JD, he started, he had an extra rotation. He sold that. That was a beautiful moment. And the baby faces stand tall at the end of the show. Once again, the top baby faces. In WWE right now, LA Knight, John Cena, obviously, Cody Rhodes, and Jay Uso were all in the same ring, and the crowd went crazy. Fantastic way to end off the show and hype people up for Fastlane. So, the question is, what happens? It looks like maybe then something, maybe this team will be at War Games. I'm all for it. If we got these four guys and you add a fifth, I'm all for it. That's a that's a good lineup for the war games, and most likely it'll be majority of JD uh, the Judgment Day members. So it's gonna be interesting to see if this is gonna be a potential lineup, at least on the babyface side of side of things for them for war games. But what I'm really looking forward to, and very interested in, is seeing what Roman has to say when he comes back next week, because he has to say something. You got Rhea out here saying, "Acknowledge me, Judgment Day running wreck shop." Because they can. Because no one can stop them. Jimmy thinks he's the tribal chief now. It's, it's a lot of things going on. Paul can't really keep control of things. Like It's going to be very interesting to see. And I do still feel that Jimmy and Solo will lose the match. But Jimmy will get pinned. And I hope LA Knight is the one to pin Jimmy. Because that's going to be very interesting if he loses. Again, on behalf of the bloodline. Roman comes back. He's not going to be mad at Solo. He's going to be mad at Jimmy because Jimmy's been talking big talk but haven't been able to back it up, especially when they needed it the most. So we'll see how things play out. But comment down below. Let me know. Did you guys enjoy this SmackDown? Did this go-home show satisfy you enough to be even more hyped for Fastlane tomorrow? But I appreciate all the love and support. Road to 150K, and I'm still young. It's the YouTube wrestling champion of the world. Appreciate y'all. Can't even see you on the next one. Peace.